Hey guys, this is Mark Goldberg from Mark Vlogs Watches, and today we have another exciting episode for you. And in fact, I'm going to I'm going to review an affordable watch. I own and collect, and I have a bunch of Rolex watches, and I and I do sing their praises. But let me tell you, Rolex is not the only game in town. You don't have to spend ten thousand dollars on a watch to be happy. And I am going to show you now a watch in the sub three hundred dollar range that I have become completely obsessed by completely obsessed i can't take it off and we're going to talk all about that as soon as we come back from the quick fist watch check and today that's a little off center here today i am wearing a g-shock it is the gstb 200 and um, we need to talk a whole lot about this watch because there are many G-Shocks in the world, but this one is mine. And I have tested out, I have bought, I have sold a variety of them. This is the one true G-Shock. And uh, actually, I wonder if it might not be the cure. I wonder if it might not be the exit watch. So let's talk about that. Rolex has lost their mojo when it comes to making tool watches. If you were lucky enough to buy a Submariner at retail, well, you still have, you know, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars in it by the time you've paid taxes. Take it to the gym and w risk shattering the crystal. I say no, you don't. Rolex is a luxury brand with tool watch origins, but they're certainly no longer a tool watch. And that's where we come to the tool watch of today. This guy here cost roughly, well, it was sub three hundred dollars. I want to say it was like two hundred and seventy-five dollars. What we're going to do now is we're going to turn the camera around. I'm going to give you a tour around the GSTB two hundred, and I'm going to tell you why I like this one better than any other G-Shock that I have used before. So let's get to that right now. Okay, fellas, here's a, a wrist shot of the um, of the G-Shock. Um, normally, um, all my other G-Shocks have been on stainless steel bands, but I decided to get this one on the resin band because I got tired of wearing watches that were really heavy. And this weighs in at something like 85 grams, so it's quite lightweight and enjoyable. Let's get it off of the wrist, and let's talk about what makes this one so great. And the first thing that we're going to do, fellas, is we're going to measure it. So. Let's zero out the calipers here. Okay, and let's let's get the measurements on this guy. 45 millimeters. Now that is not a small watch, but it's pretty short lug to lug, and that makes it wear um, better than you would think for a watch of this size. And in fact, this has what G-Shock is calling carbon core technology, uh, which I think is just a bunch of buzzwords for them mixing stuff into the resin that goes in between the layers of the watch. However, uh, that has enabled them to go slightly smaller. And so we're at 45 millimeters here, but uh, its predecessor was 50 millimeters and it looked like a pie plate on my wrist. This is much more manageable. Let's take a look at the lug to lug here. Metal to metal, lug to lug is 52.3. So it's reasonably manageable. And for reference, guys, I have a beautiful seven and a quarter inch wrist. Now, let me tell you what makes this the perfect watch for me. A couple few things. First, it's analog. Okay, so it, it's got the hour, minute, and seconds hand. Now, you'll find any number of G-Shocks. Let me see if I can put this down, zoom in a little, and be more stable. Okay. You'll find any number of G-Shocks which have the um, hour and minute hand, but which lack a seconds hand, and most of those are going to have some kind of digital subdial for the seconds. But I'm a freak. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm a little bit of a weirdo. The OCD in me, I want to see that seconds hand moving around. Okay, I literally want to see physical movement on the watch. Um, the digital display for the seconds, for those of you who don't have this exact form of OCD, I'm sure it's just fine. But in my case, uh, it, it's a complete requirement that I have that moving seconds hand. Now, uh, I did have a watch before this which had a sub seconds 
a subdial for the seconds, which gave me great precision and accuracy. However, uh, it lacked that satisfying constant motion that I really do need. So I wanted full analog, but you can also see that there is a screen here for the um, digital readout. Let me get out of my own way and zoom in on that. There's a digital readout there, which gives us the, um, the full time. And I love that because I am a dog trainer, and so I'm often recording on the charts for the dog, what time they ate, when they went to the bathroom, when I worked them, uh, etc. So I really do love the fact that I can, um, at a glance, get the precise time to put on the chart from the digital display. That's really important to me. But I can look at the analog time when I want just an impression of where I am in the day. Now, of course, we have to talk about all of these buttons. But for the moment, the first one I want to talk to you about is this adjust button, because one of its functions, if I push it now, will be I just changed that digital screen from the time to the date. Okay, And um, I'm, I think you can see there it says 12, 13, Friday. Okay, so normally I leave it in that um, position, but when I want to be certain that I have instant access to the correct time, well, I just hit that adjust button right there. And, um, and I convert it over to the digital time. So as far as I'm concerned, this watch absolutely has the best of everything. And that was critical to me. Now, here is another function which I found really important. And this is just me. It, you know, man, it's like G-Shock invented this watch specifically for fulfilling my particular brand of crazy because what you he see here, it looks just like a, a fuel meter or, you know, or like a gas gauge on a car. And this is showing the condition of the battery. Now, the battery is solar rechargeable. That's another thing. I, I don't want to consider the possibility that I got a battery running out in this watch. I just, especially because on the back, which we'll look at later, you'll have to take out a screwdriver and it's slightly tricky to change the battery on a G Shock. So um, I love the fact that it has solar recharge and we're out in good direct sunlight right now. So it's, uh, you know, you put it in direct sunlight, the directions tell you you could get like three days operation if it just spends five minutes in direct sunlight. So I love seeing the uh, battery condition at a glance. Now, you, you see the word connect on the right hand side of the dial at about three o'clock. And we're going to talk about this, but it does connect to the Bluetooth uh, app, which I keep on my phone. And you can also check battery level there. But a lot of G-Shocks require you to connect the watch to Bluetooth and then look at battery condition on your phone. And if you're the kind of guy who would prefer not to constantly be thinking about the battery, maybe that's the way to go. Um, because some people are going to obsess, oh gosh, it moved from full to you know one tick below full. Now I've got to find some sunlight. <laughs> this, is, this is the way my brain works a little bit. Uh, anyway, oh, by the way, I want to do a shout out to uh, Maverick Watches because Mav bought this uh, and reviewed it or, and uh, it made me crazy. The second I saw it, I was like, oh my God, I need to have this watch. Okay, so um, that's the first thing the adjust button does for you. And I notice if I push and hold the adjust button down, it moves the hands out of the way of the screen in case it's blocking something and you want to see it. The light button, well, I'll show you the loom a little bit later, but the, the hands are loomed, um, which allows you, and the, the illumination is pretty decent, so it allows you to read it most of the night, but if you want to see the whole screen, you just hit that light button, and then depending on how you have set up the, um, the settings in the app, then um, you're either going to get 1.5 seconds or 3 seconds of light, and you're gonna, it's got two very bright LEDs. So one will illuminate the analog portion and another one will backlight that digital portion. And let me tell you guys, be careful if you tap that button in the middle of the night that, you're not, that you don't have your watch pointed at your sleeping partner or they are gonna smack you in the face with a pillow because this thing is bright and, and it's bright enough to wake somebody up if it shines in their eyes, which I love because <laughs> I can always read this watch whenever I need to. So that's what the light button does. Now the light button also functions um, if you, if you press and hold it, you, you can set it so that the light automatically comes on if you tilt the watch. 
but um, I prefer to do all my settings through the app, which again, we'll talk about in a minute. The, um, I think probably the other really important button that we got to look at is the, um, the mode button. So let's have a quick um, look at that now. Right now we are in the time mode and when it's in just regular timekeeping mode, you'll notice the, um, what's active is the battery indicator because that's what you're most often going to want to see. But if you push this button once, it's going to go to world time and you can see I'm getting a city read out of Bangkok and then I'm getting the time in Bangkok. That's just what I set it to for this demonstration. And I know that it's AM uh, because there would be a, a small P right about there if this was a PM time in that uh, in that alternate time zone. But you have your choice of 300 different cities which you can access through the app and you can send that setting to the watch. Um, and then you can swap time zones uh, with using the buttons or if you um, connect to the app. It'll just swap the time zones if you're traveling between two, t between two parts of the world. And then um, you could just, can dis you would be displaying um, in the analog, you'd be displaying your local time and in digital, your home time and vice versa. So if we hit the mode button yet one more time, we are going to go over to the stopwatch. Now I find this extremely handy because this watch doesn't have a spinning dive bezel. And if it did, holy cow, wouldn't that just be perfect? I wish it just had a spinning dive bezel, but it doesn't have that. However, we got quick and easy access to the stopwatch. We press the find button here and we've begun the stopwatch. And then uh, we press it again we stop it, we can restart it, or we can zero it out by touching the adjust button up here. Now we move along to the mode button one more time and we come to the timer. Um, you can set the timer like most of the functions. You could use the buttons, um, but if you're going to do that, you need the chubby little manual that nobody ever holds on to or has with them at a, at a given point in time. So I do all of this through the app, but you could set the timer and, um, then your watch will beep. Right now it's set for 20 minutes, so if I start at 20 minutes from now, it will beep. Um, honestly, I think the timer and the alarm is kind of stupid because you have a phone for that. Like, your phone is so much quicker and easier for those functions. So I think those are kind of wasteful functions, but some people in their reviews make mention of the fact that maybe you want to be a little bit more discreet with your timer or your alarm. You don't want to pull your phone out. So yeah, I don't know. I don't honestly, I don't know why I would ever use the alarm or the timer on this watch, given that that's what my smartphone does for me. Granted, you could also check the time on your smartphone, but I love having that on my wrist. Okay, so we push the mode button once again, and now we are in the alarm mode. It, I don't remember how many alarms it has, and honestly, I don't care because I'm never going to use it, but it has at least one alarm. And if we push it one more time, you will hear a different, slightly different tone. And now we go right back to the uh, full timekeeping mode. And again, uh, using the adjust button, we can come off of the day date function, and we can use the digital readout of the time function. So let me tell you guys, I love this thing. Now there's a couple functions that we haven't spoken about yet. One is this find button. So if you leave Bluetooth turned on in your, on your phone, and if you have the app, and if you've, all you have to do is pair the watch to the app only once, right? And if you do that, then they know each other, the app and the, and the watch, they will know each other. And um, if you push the find button, your phone is going to start making a whole lot of noise. It'll play a song and it will do that even if you have your phone set on silent. So if you have lost your phone between the couch cushions or someplace and you just don't know where it is, push that button and you will find your phone. Now I'm one of these people who is umbilically corded to my phone. So I very rarely lose it, but I know lots of people who are constantly losing their phone and would find that button to be a constant and happy companion. Okay. So if you are one of those people who's forever misplacing your phone, that find button right there is going to be your friend. Um, and the, uh, the crown. Now, this is not actually a crown. It looks like one, but what it really is, is it's just a button. Okay, it's just a button. So it, although it's knurled, it has like those gear cuts on it, um, you don't turn it. 
it doesn't turn it just has that pusher on the end and if you push and hold it will um, take the seconds hand and it will put it all the way to the R that you see right here and that means it's trying to connect or receive the Bluetooth and then um, maybe one or two seconds later it will move to the Bluetooth symbol right there and that's how you know that you have connected to the app so once you've connected to the app I mean the app it's super simple it, it, honestly I wish they'd make it a little more sophisticated but in the app you can do functions such as setting your alarm your timer you can change your home city um, more likely you would change your uh, second time zone because your home city doesn't change too often or you could swap from your home city to your uh, world time or travel city uh, when you get there and um, importantly the other thing that happens is um, when even when you manually connect the watch is talking to uh, the online server of G-Shock which is connected to something like an atomic clock and it is updating the time on this watch so if it has gotten because I think I want to say it's plus or minus 15 seconds per month if you do nothing but if you uh, connect it to the app then multiple times per day um, it's going to check in with the app in the background and uh, and adjust itself so let me tell you th this thing is plus or minus zero on a daily basis because I have the app I have paired the watch to the app and you know I think it's four times per day you, you won't even know what's happening they just communicate with each other and and make that you know tenth of a second adjustment so um, I love the fact that this watch is constantly completely and fully up to date um, in terms of the time now um, we haven't talked about the thickness of it yet and it's chubby uh, for what it is but it's not ridiculously thick it is 14.2 so actually I don't know is that even chubby I think it's very manageable so remember it was 45 wide and we and, and 14 thick and only about 85 or 90 grams so it's a super manageable watch now you can see that this pusher is protected because uh, it's a little recessed into this fake looking crown thing and uh, these pushers are recessed slightly into the um, resin center section of the watch um, but I must say they're easily accessible I don't accidentally hit them or push them on anything but I have had other G-Shocks where I struggle to make contact with the button or to locate it and it, it, this is just super easy to push so really nice um, you're looking at the screw here uh, and I love the fact that they're no longer using slotted screws on the uh, on the bezel which is steel by the way um, they're using a, a proprietary security screw and what I love about that is whether these screws are aligned or misaligned is barely noticeable and with the slotted screws on their other um, steel bezel G-Shocks well they never could align the screw heads so the slots were always misaligned and that always bugged me and uh, look at what they've done here <laughs> they've, they've put on a security screw and you almost can't tell whether they're aligned or they're not aligned I love that I just love the fact that they've done that um, okay now here's an interesting factoid I, can you see let me get my pointer you see what you got right there right there um, that is a um, an access point with a little lever to get at the spring bar okay so if you were to take I could almost do it with this thing here if you were to take and just slide that level lever over you would be detracting or retracting the spring bar that's holding this bracelet on and uh, we'd be able to easily pop off uh, the bracelet and it has that on both sides um, and now that would be extremely cool if I could figure out where you buy replacement straps so this is a this is a pretty new watch new for this year and um, there is talk that G-Shock will be offering replacement straps let me just get you a better look at the screen while we're waffling on here um, there is a lot of talk that G-Shock will be creating replacement straps um, and I would love that I would love if they could um, you know give me a blue one a red one like why can't we why can't we make this like Panerai <laughs> you know I I want to be a Paneristi I want to be a G-Shocker and um, I want to dress up my Barbie dolls in different clothes so it, they have made the strap incredibly easy to remove but as far as I can tell nowhere 
have they introduced the replacement straps um, in various colors. So this is a useless feature unless just later in the year they're planning on coming out with a, a portion of the store for the straps. Now, if you have managed to listen to me this far and if you know if you know anything about replacement straps, a red one, a blue one, a green one, a camo, like please tell me uh, in the comments where you get that. Oh, look what just happened. Um, the, uh, the seconds hand has just gone to R and it is trying to connect to the phone right now. Remember I told you this will happen seamlessly in the background. Um, it couldn't do it, guys. It couldn't do it. And the reason is probably because I'm videoing on the phone right now. So I, I probably have all the phone's functions occupied. If it had managed to connect, it would have gone to that little Bluetooth symbol. Oh, I think I'm wrong. I think when it went to the R, all it was doing was receiving the time because it didn't need to connect and uh, give me access to all those functions. Yeah, that's what happened. It just self-corrected for the time. I'm so glad we got to catch that moment right there at the R. Okay, so now if my watch was off like 0.0001 seconds fast or slow, it just fixed it. So it's amazing. Um, Okay, let's see. Let's take a look at the back of the watch. Oh, no, let's, let's get the spec here um, at the, um, right where the watch connects to the band. The band is 24.1, call it 24, and then uh, it tapers down to 20. Uh, so there's a nice little taper in the bracelet here. The buckle is nothing to write home about. It's not signed, um, but you know, completely serviceable. And uh, it's, it's very hard to tell. Uh, now you can see this kind of has like a carbon fiber, you know, print to the, um, to the, to the resin band. Um, but, you know, Mav complained in his review about the feel of this band, but I, I find it supple. And um, yeah, I got to say, I, I super like it. It's really rough and tough. It's very, very hard to damage. And it's so comfortable. I can easily sleep in this watch which I do. Okay, so on the back, um, G-Shock tends to put their entire spec sheet. I don't know why they put so much junk on the back, but there you have a look at it. Um, carbon core guard. They've just managed to add some carbon material to the resin inside in the internals, and what that has done is it makes this watch a little bit lighter and it enables them to make it a little bit smaller to hit its spec sheet as a tool watch now, speaking of which, in the conclusion, which we're going to do right now, I'm going to turn this watch around and we're going to talk a little bit about the specs. Let's do that right now. So what makes this guy so tough? What makes it such a terrific tool watch besides its price point? And this one, uh, the GSTB200, which prices in uh, on, a, on, a, on a bracelet, uh, right around $300 and uh, 320 maybe, and uh, on a resin strap like this, prices in well under $300. Well, the first thing is, if you're a second story man, a cat burglar, you can drop this from the third story window of a house that you're burglarizing, and it is designed to withstand that. The mineral crystal glass, well, I know it's not quite as hard as sapphire, but it's very hard, and I've literally never scratched one. Um, and I've put them through their paces. Water resistance down to 200 meters. <laughs> 200 meters and they're temperature resistant shock resistant etc so uh let me just say at 300 bucks i don't think you can find a finer watch now is it luxury no uh g-shock is trying to take advantage of a little bit the luxury market by coming out with some of their watches in the two to seven thousand dollar range and i would avoid those but you cannot go wrong with a 300 dollars g-shock now the the one before it that i owned i have sold it let me drop a picture of it in right here. Take a quick minute and throw a like on this video and subscribe to my channel for more content. Let me tell you why I sold that watch. It was bigger than this one. It was like five millimeters wider, so it just looked a lot bigger. Um, it was thicker and chubbier, and it was on that um, steel bracelet, so it was much, much heavier. And most critically of all, it didn't have that digital signal or that digital screen, right? So there was no seconds hand and I, it just, it was close. It was really close, but it wasn't quite this guy here. And that watch retailed new for, I wanna say $350. They're coming down in cost. 
Well, take a look at the loom on this. The uh, the hands are illuminated, but when you push the button, it's crazy. Two very high intensity LEDs come on it. Man, it's crazy at night. Remember to please like and subscribe this video and thanks so much for spending this time with me. Guys, there's a G-Shock for every purpose. This one is mine. Which one do you like? Am I crazy? Can you find a G-Shock that suits every one of your little tiny crazy spots? Fill in all the nooks and crannies in the weird spot of your brain? Guys, if I did it, you can do it because I'm a complete freak when it comes to my requirements for a watch. Now, I'm gonna let you go with this. I bought this thing over three weeks ago and I've taken it off twice. I've gone out to dinner, I put on the Rolex Yachtmaster, I went out to a Christmas party, I put on the Rolex Skydweller, uh, and then every time I come home, I put this guy right back on because this is my go-to, this is my daily, I, I, this is the thing I sleep in, I shower in. It's only been three weeks, but I can't stop wearing it. And it's very rare a new watch lasts that long before the honeymoon ends. Guys, what am I going to do? What's going to happen? Give me your thoughts in the comments. Oh, please subscribe to all that, you know, YouTube -y stuff. Thanks for being with me. Goldberg, peace out.